Welcome to Dubai. I'm Landon Darrens. I'm the Senior Director at the Atlanta Council Global Energy Center. And we're at COP28 at the Global Decarbonization Accelerator, a pavilion and the energy transition hub, driving ambition on climate change, thinking through the energy system we have today and where we're going for the future. To do this, uh, we're bringing through a series of, of conversations with leaders uh, and industry experts. And, and today I'm really excited to be joined by Rebecca Chiava, who is the President and CEO of Nextera Energy Resources. Rebecca, welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. So tell me, how is your experience in Dubai coming uh, today? It's been terrific. We are thrilled to be here at COP28. Uh, it is so terrific to see the progress that we've made. You know, if you just look at the carbon emissions across the U.S. electricity sector, we've improved significantly over the last 15 years. But it's also daunting. There is so much more work to be done. And if you think about how much progress we made, I think we may have accomplished the easy parts. And now we need to really start the hard work. And that's going to take a lot of collaboration across the stakeholders that are here, whether it's governments, commercial entities, individuals that are championing and pioneering uh, innovations that are so critical for us to be successful. Well, you know, since the uh, Paris Agreement and, and the uh, opportunities and action that has taken place through the UNFCCC process, there's been this abundance of both national and corporate commitments to net zero. Uh, I think broadly speaking, net zero mid-century is a really popular uh, benchmark globally. Uh, Nextera Energy Resources, Nextera uh, Energy in general has uh, your own benchmarks for achieving net zero, uh, but it's a little bit different. I think there's an application to it that maybe, uh, maybe you can speak to a little bit for us. At Nextera Energy, we made a real zero commitment about 18 months ago. And real zero is that we expect to emit no emissions from our operations. And as the world's leader in renewables, that might sound like a great goal. It is. Uh, but we also are the world's largest utility or the nation's largest utility in the U.S. Uh, and is, so as a power sector participant, that's a really ambitious goal. Uh, but when we made the goal, we also announced the plan to get there, which I think is what makes us really unique. Um, so we plan to decarbonize our own operations first, and we've made a ton of progress. We already have a carbon intensity that is 50% lower than the rest of the nation's electric utilities, and we're making progress every year. What is also exciting is to take all the learnings that we have on the power sector side and help the rest of our power sector peers in the industry help to decarbonize. We've already deployed about 30 gigawatts of renewables and we have them in operation. Um, either we own them and operate them or operate them uh, for our partners. Uh, and we have plans to deploy another 30 gigawatts between now and 2026. Um, and beyond that, we want to help our commercial customers. Um, when I talked about the easy stuff is done, I actually don't think all of the, you know, the hard parts done in the power sector. But if you look to commercial entities and the industrial sector, agriculture, transportation, uh, we're just getting started. And so we want to take our experience and help these customers enable their own decarbonization plans. The scale of uh, meet, meeting that net zero 2045 uh, benchmark, and you're talking about gigawatt deployments of, uh, of renewable energy, of course, but also storage um, and maybe some new technologies. Can you speak to just the scale of what it means that uh, the, where you see your company going in terms of deployment uh, and, and what technologies you really hone in on uh, to make that happen. Yeah, what's so exciting about the U.S. electricity sector, broadly speaking around the world as well, is we've seen over the last 15 years a 60% decline in the cost of wind energy, 80% decline in storage, and an even more significant decline in battery storage. And the way that we've accomplished that is through manufacturing scale, commercial experience, uh, those of us deploying the technologies, learning as we go through that process, and innovation. Uh, and innovation is a critical component to this. You're finding better ways to do what we're already doing, either in lower cost or more efficient ways of, of enabling this technology. The other thing that's really critical about innovation is data. Sure. Um, and that's one of the advantages we've seen in our industry is having the scale and experience to be able to gather the data and learn from it so that we can improve. We're getting 60 billion data points every day from our renewable fleet and taking that information, using algorithms to operate it better, lower cost of operations, uh, and better inform how we build those projects in the future. So it's one thing to think through digitalization and some of the technologies of the future, but we still need some pretty anchor infrastructure to make this all happen too. And I know 
despite the successes we've seen with the Inflation Reduction Act and deployment of policy, it's enabling supply to hit the market. We're also experiencing a moment where maybe there's some gummed up uh, infrastructure build out. How do we get past those hurdles and really see uh, the full potential of the renewable energy sector, the clean energy sector, uh, thrive in the U.S. market and then more broadly globally? I think one of the keys, whether it's at COP28 or in every other forum where we talk about the energy transformation, one of the keys is collaboration. Um, and as I highlighted, our goals at COP is to help influence government policy, uh, other commercial entities, stakeholders that have a part to play to really engage with one another. There is no single company, there is no single industry that is going to help us accomplish our goals. And so that clear-headed, clear-eyed uh, role to policy and implementation is really, really important. Well, we wish NextEra Energy uh, luck in building those coalitions and fostering some progress here in Dubai uh, and a very fruitful COP28 for you. So Thank you very much. Us. We appreciate it.